Hello, I am Amit Vartak and this is a part of IPv6 presentation series on securitytube.net. This presentation is on IPv4 versus IPv6. In other IPv6 presentations, I have explained different features in IPv6 and what are their counter features in IPv4, whether they were present, if present, how these features will be replaced in IPv6. In this presentation, I will be mainly concentrating on the differences between IPv6 and IPv4 protocol. So you can say this is a consolidated presentation of other feature presentations. The first and very important difference between IPv4 and IPv6 is the address length. The source and destination address length in IPv4 is just 32 bits and in IPv6 it is 128 bit or 16 bytes. So if you see the difference between IPv4 and IPv6 address length, it is four times increased. Earlier it was 32 bits and now it is 128 bit. The possible number of IP addresses in IPv4 are 2 to power 32 which is around 4 billion. The current world population itself is more than 6 billion. So currently every man on this earth will not be able to get an IP address. While in IPv6 the number of possible addresses are 2 to power 128. And this number is such a huge number that every grain of soil on this earth can be given multiple number of IP addresses. So the IP address, number of IP address range is tremendously increased in IPv6 as compared to IPv4. In IPv6 header, the other differences compared to IPv4 are IPv4 header used to contain checksum, but IPv6 header will not be containing any checksum. It was found that the IP layer checksum is not playing a very important role in packet routing. So IPv6 checksum is being removed. The TCP and UDP checksums will be present and they are mandatory. Next difference is header includes options. IPv4 header can have optional fields included in header itself. But in IPv6, all optional data is moved to IPv6 extension headers. The IPv6 basic header will be of fixed size and we can have as many number of extension headers possible which will append IPv6 header. But they will not be part of IPv6 header. This separation with extension headers is very efficient in the routing. Now every router has to just process the fixed length IPv6 header for taking any routing decisions which was not the case for IPv4. The IPv4 machines use broadcast address to send the packet to all the nodes on that subnet or on that link. Instead of sending a broadcast packet in IPv6, a link local scoped all node multicast address is being defined. So when any node wants to send a packet on that subnet to all other nodes, that node can use link local scoped all node multicast address instead of all FFFF broadcast address which was used in IPv4. The other important difference is auto configuration. In IPv4, if you want to give IP address to any node, either you can give manual IP address or the IP address will be given by DHCP server. The DHCP will have a pool of IP addresses which, which can be assigned to any host on that link. And when any host asks for an IP address, DHCP will give an IP address for a least time. In IPv6, this manual and DHCP thing are still valid, but the default configuration is always stateless auto configuration. Every node is capable of getting IP address on its own. The other routers on that subnet can give a router prefix and the node will generate its IP address with the help of the router prefix and its MAC address or some random number. So the main dependency on this manual and DHCP IP configuration is now completely removed and stateless auto configuration will be will go a long way for home appliances etc deployments for finding link layer addresses for ipv4 nodes they use arc mechanism this arc mechanism is having security flaws and the mechanism will not be supported in ipv6 nodes instead to find the link layer address ipv6 nodes will do neighbor solicitation this neighbor solicitation can be topped with ipsec to be, safe, to be more secured. In IPv4, the fragmentation decisions can be taken by sending host as well as by the routers. If router wants to fragment a packet while transferring, he can fragment that packet. 
but in ipv6 the fragmentation decision will be solely taken by the sending host and the path mtu will be found by sending host and he can only take the decision whether to fragment the packet or not in ipv4 there is no identification of packet flow in ip header but in ipv6 a flow label field is introduced in ipv6 header itself so that the routers can identify the packet flow and prioritize the delivery if some host want to transfer some bunch of packets to some destination and he wants the he wants all these packets to be treated similar way by in between routers then he can add the flow label field and once flow label field is added the all the packets with same flow label field and same source address will be treated in the same way by all the routers in ipv4 igmp was used to manage local subnet group memberships this igmp is replaced with multicast listener discovery or mld to manage the igmp kind of thing icmp router discovery was the mechanism in ipv4 to find the address of the best default gateway but the mechanism was optional and i am really doubtful how many host use this icmp router discovery to find out the default gateway ip address but in ipv6 uh, icmp v6 router solicitation and router advertisement is used to find the best default gateways ip address and this feature is mandatory uh, important change with respect to ipv4 and ipv6 addresses on dns host address resource record or type a records are used for dns map to host name for ipv4 addresses while aaaa or cod a records are used to map ipv6 ip addresses in dns there are many other changes in ip packet structure the way ip addresses are given the way ip addresses are used the way routing decisions will be taken and it so on but these are the main differences that anyone learning ipv6 must know as compared to ipv4 that's it for this video thank you keep looking for more exciting and more informative videos in ipv6 presentation series thank you